So what is the best paragraph generator? In my opinion, that award is simply going to go to Jasper. In case you haven't seen plenty of the other videos that I've utilized when it comes to Jasper, this template is probably one of my favorites just because it's so flexible, it's high quality, and it comes with plenty of other templates that you can utilize in order to generate better paragraphs. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but before we continue, in case you'd like to check them out, I will put a link in the description. If you click that, you'll get taken to a unique page that gives you not only a free trial, but you get some bonus words as well. If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be under the template section, and of course, there's paragraph generator. I already have three tabs open at the top with three different examples that I'm going to show you how it works. So very easy to do. On the left side, we're going to talk a little bit about what our paragraph is going to be used for. We want a keyword to include here. I just put sales. Tone of voice is going to be witty, but I can change it around for this one. Let's just say professional. Change it around for once. Two outputs is good because I don't want to read through too many of them, especially when we have multiple examples. And normally I like putting a little bit more in terms of characters, but I think Jasper is going to have a good grasp on exactly what I'm talking about. We're talking about increasing sales, product launches. It's pretty easy to figure out what's going on here. So with that being said, let's click on generate AI content and see what we get. All right, and as I talked about before, also why I like Jasper, not only is it the paragraph generator, but what I like doing is creating an outline, say whether it's for an article or it could be for a video. And when you have those subheadlines, you can put these subheadlines into this paragraph generator. And that's just a unique and cool way of creating an entire article or maybe a video script, whatever it's going to be for you. I have a video that shows you exactly how to do that. If I remember, I will put a video card up at the top right of the video where you can check that out later if you like. But either way, in case I forget, feel Feel free to remind me in the comments. So here are just two little examples for the uh, increasing your sales with a product launch. Let's read them. So when you're launching a new product, it's important to think about how you can increase sales and get people interested in what you're offering. One way to do this is to create a sense of urgency around the launch. This can be done by setting a limited time for the launch or by offering special incentives for people who purchase during the launch period. You can also generate buzz by hosting an event or creating an engaging social media campaign. By taking some time to plan ahead, you can ensure that your product launch is successful, that you can see a bump in sales. I don't know what else to say about that. It's a paragraph. It's directly related to what we were talking about and that just was perfect okay look at the next one talk about over delivering we have quite a few paragraphs here we have a few reasons few benefits let's talk about it so launching a new product can be a great way to increase sales and boost your business however it's important to make sure that you're doing it right in order to get the most out of your launch here are a few tips to help you increase sales when launching a new product exactly what we're looking for so number one make sure you have a great product this may seem obvious. It's, it's funny. I read that and I'm like, wow, that's pretty obvious. And that's what they put there, which I find funny. But it's important to make sure that your product is high quality and it meets customers' needs. If you're launching a new product, make sure you've done your research and that you're confident in your offering. Number two, create buzz. Before you launch your product, start generating buzz by letting people know about it ahead of time. Use social media, email marketing, and other marketing channels to get people excited about your upcoming product launch. Number three, offer incentives. Provide incentives for people to buy your product during the launch period. This could include discounts, free shipping, or other special offers. By providing an incentive, you'll be most likely to convert interested shoppers into paying customers. Number four, make it easy to buy. Make sure the process of buying your product is as smooth and as easy as possible. This includes having a user-friendly website or online store, offering multiple payment options, and providing excellent customer service. If buying your product is difficult or frustrating, potential customers will likely look elsewhere. By following these tips, you can give your product launch a sales boost and help ensure its success. So overall, that one was really good. I mean, that was a lot more than a paragraph. Sometimes you'll get small blurbs, which are paragraphs, and sometimes you'll get these really hefty, long, uh, great pieces of content. It's going to be either or, you know, but either way is still good. You're still getting a paragraph. Sometimes you just happen to get a little more. And I think that was a great uh, example when it comes to increasing your sales and doing a product launch. Let's take a look at the next example. All right. So are webinars dead or are they something that I should be using to increase my leads and sales? That's what this paragraph is going to be about. Webinars is going to be the keyword to include professional. Again, let's generate that AI content. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at the first one. In recent years, webinars have become increasingly popular as a way to generate leads and sales, and it's easy to see why. Webinars are a cost-effective, efficient way to reach a large audience 
all at once. However, some experts have proclaimed that webinars are dead, citing declining attendance rates and declines in sales numbers. But are webinars really dead or are they just evolving? It's true that webinars may not be as effective as they once were. Attendees rates have declined and it's harder to get people to commit to sitting through an hour long webinar. However, this doesn't mean that webinars are no longer useful. They can still be a great way to generate leads and sales and if they're used correctly. The key is to make sure that your webinar is interesting and valuable enough to justify the time investment. If you can do that, webinars can still be a powerful tool in your marketing arsenal. Okay, very good. So that one actually answered the question, are webinars dead and talked more about it. Let's look at this one. I think I skimmed through it and it's more about like the benefits and so on and so forth. So let's just read this. With the advent of digital technology, webinars have become increasingly popular as a means of communication and marketing. A webinar is an online seminar that allows businesses to connect with prospective customers in real time. Webinars offer a number of advantages, including the ability to reach a global audience, generate leads, and boost sales. While webinars have been criticized for being time-consuming and ineffective, there is no doubt that they can be a powerful tool when used correctly. In order to maximize the impact of webinars, businesses should focus on creating quality content that provides value to the audience. Additionally, businesses should ensure that webinars are well-promoted and marketed to the right audience. With careful planning and execution, webinars can be an invaluable asset in any business's marketing arsenal okay so good even though it didn't actually say like webinars aren't dead it talks about how they're criticized like there could be reason for them people saying that but overall they are effective i like both of those those are very good around the same i'd say it's tough to say they're broken into two paragraphs but both of these were pretty hefty in terms of the content let's take a look at the last one that we have now a completely different example all right, skateboarding. Like I said, a completely different example. Back in the eighth grade, I was skateboarding. I fell on a curb and I snapped my arm in half. So skateboarding uh, is near and dear to my heart for some not so great reasons. So every now and then I'll bring it up as an example. So it is dangerous. We know that uh, skateboarding is going to be the keywords to include. Professional. Why not? Let's generate that AI content. And for this last one, let's see what we get. All right. Just Kicking off right into it. Skateboarding is considered dangerous for a variety of reasons. All right, this gets right on into it. Like I said, first, skateboards are small and unstable, making it easy for riders to lose balance and fall. Second, skateboards have no brakes, making it difficult to stop or slow down once in motion. Third, skateboards are often used in skate parks and on streets with traffic, increasing the risk of collision. Finally, skateboarders often perform tricks that can lead to serious injury if not executed properly. I have first-hand experience with that. Should I say first arm experience? Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> While skateboarding can be dangerous, it can also be a lot of fun. By following some simple safety guidelines, skateboarders can enjoy the sport while minimizing the risks. Okay, so aside from the fact that this S wasn't capitalized, that was great. Here's the longer one, and this is the last one. It's often considered a dangerous activity and with good reason. Every year, thousands of skateboarders are injured, some of them quite seriously. There are a number of factors that contribute to the inherent riskiness of skateboarding. First of all, skateboards are small and unstable, which makes them difficult to control. Furthermore, skateboarders often perform tricks and maneuvers that require them to leave the ground, increasing their chances of falling. And finally, skateboarding takes place in a variety of settings, from crowded city streets to busy skate parks, which increase the likelihood of colliding with other skateboarders or obstacles. So just want to break there. It did talk about that recently in the previous one, but if you notice, it added much more to it and it changed it around. So that's... That's a good thing if you ask me. Though skateboarding is certainly risky, it can be enjoyed safely by following a few simple safety guidelines. Wearing protective gear such as a helmet and elbow and knee pads is essential. Skateboarders should also avoid skating in crowded areas and always be aware of their surroundings. By taking these precautions, skateboarders can enjoy the activity while minimizing their risk or injury. So overall, that was once again another great example. These are just examples of why I think Jasper has the best paragraph generator overall in terms of what you put in there, you get some great results. It rarely goes off the rails. The quality is very high. And I think you can kind of see that based upon these examples, but you know, feel free to test it out yourself. Anyway, I hope that you got some value out of this when it comes to the best paragraph generator. Feel free to test them out yourself. Just don't take my word for it. It's always great where you can put in your own content and see the results that you get personally, because obviously it's going to mean much more to you when you put in you know, a niche or a topic or an example that you're going to be writing about. The link is down below in case you want to get that free trial and bonus. Any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment down below. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.